is featured in his classic novel, The Sun Also Rises. Hemingway is so important to Idaho history. He's such a big figure in Idaho. And so to be able to kind of bridge those two gaps, the Basque community and Hemingway, um, we were really excited about. The exhibit is open now and available with standard museum admission. Meanwhile, Boise's connection to the Basque country is well known. The City of Trees, home to one of the highest concentrations of people with Basque heritage, uh, heritage outside the Pyrenees. Pyrenees, that is. Still to come here on Good Morning Idaho, kayakers from all over the world are here in Idaho. We'll show you why. First, though, at 509, there's a live look at a very lit up uh, Boise from our tower cam on top of the Grove Hotel. We'll be right back. Welcome back, kayakers. They come from all over the world to paddle the infamous North Fork of the Payette River, a class five proving ground for paddlers who want to take their game to the next level. <laughs> I can't imagine. Ooh. In this Idaho back roads, our Steve Dent caught up with a paddler from Chile and two from the Czech Republic who came to challenge themselves on our rivers. <laughs> The North Fork Championship built up an incredible mystique worldwide as the best kayakers would come to our own backyard every June to race. And even though this extreme competition has been canceled, kayakers still come to test their skills on this Class 5 training ground, simply known as the North Fork. When I'm young, I watch the videos from North Fork Championship. And for me, it's like a dream to stay here because the, I think the, all this section, the 15 miles, is really perfect for stout kayaking. Juan Ilabarga visits Idaho from Chile, just a kayak, while Visek Baran came from the Czech Republic to work with Cascade as a raft guide so he could paddle the North Fork in his spare time. It's big. I like it. The North Fork features 15 miles of Class 5 whitewater divided into three sections, and we saw these paddlers take on crunch in the lower five. Many, many rivers that uh, I do in Czech Republic are very jumping between rocks. We don't do it here. Here you jump between uh, holes. These two foreign visitors highlight some of the things we take for granted. The sections in the Payette River system run next to the road, making for easy access, simplifying shuttles, and providing opportunities to get out if things don't go as planned. And while high water has disappeared, we will have steady river levels all the way until around Labor Day, while other rivers around the West dry up. Yeah, we, we have water all the summer. That is really amazing. It's really special. The North Fork is for experts only. I've never made it above the lower five. Raft companies won't take people down this stretch because it's too dangerous, but they do offer rides <laughs> on four different stretches that the entire family can enjoy, even if you don't have any river experience. And it all just kind of melds together into one magical place. And after meeting these two at Banks Cafe, it's easy to understand why Banks gets referred to as the center of the universe for whitewater. Oh yeah, I really like the place, the people, the culture, and I love mountains, so I'm really in my, in my preferred environment. Steve Dent, Idaho News 6. This is Geneva Zoltek with the Idaho News 6 forecast. That is pretty impressive. That is one thing that I don't think I will ever do is um, some kayak river rafting. All right, taking a look outside this morning, Tamarack Resort overlooking Cascade Lake. A beautiful uh, nighttime glow. You can see all those stars up there. Love to see that early in the morning. It's going to be hot once again today. Excuse me, my throat is uh, getting a little stuffed. <laughs> Just ignore me. I need more coffee this morning. Temperatures rising uh, all over the place. We're still seeing some isolated monsoonal storms this afternoon and evening, but not as much as yesterday. And that heat wave is sticking around. <clears throat> we do have a heat advisory in effect here for central Idaho as well as southern Idaho. A lot of us are going to be getting very hot temperatures today and through the weekend. Also eastern Oregon under this advisory. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be joining all the folks down south who have been dealing with this excessive heat for some time now. So lots of these advisories in effect in Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and California right now as well, in addition to the southern states. Uh, so a lot of us are getting 
get under these heat domes right now, these really hot bubbles of hot air that won't burst and won't move because they're really just uh, circulating the heat. They kind of go up to the top of the dome and they go down to the dome and it doesn't escape. So we are seeing very hot weather here because of that. Now temperatures right now, of course, are a lot better if you want to get outdoors. We're looking at 73 in Glens Ferry right now, but take a peek at Glens Ferry this afternoon. 107 degrees is looking at the high, so it is going to be a very toasty day. We're looking at highs in the triple digits in the Treasure Valley as well. 106 expected in Ontario, and these are our high temperatures tomorrow. We're going to be slightly warmer tomorrow. That's really going to be our peak heat. We're looking at 106 in Boise tomorrow. Temperatures in the higher elevations even getting pretty hot there with 92 in Ketchum, 94 in Stanley, 97 in Pine. We're also going to see some smoky skies this morning. We've got ongoing wildfires a couple close to home here in Idaho, but also in Northern California in southwestern Oregon, sending smoke all the way up to Seattle, really. And Idaho is getting quite a lot of those hazy skies as well. Now, this afternoon and evening, we're going to see that smoke dissipate a little bit, and it's pretty high up in the atmosphere, so it's not really impacting air quality at this time. So some good news there. All right, let's go through the regional forecast. It is going to be a hot and sunny day today here in the Treasure Valley. We're looking at 106 in Ontario, hot over in the lower Treasure Valley for sure. Mostly sunny over here in the West Central Mountains, 87 in Cascade, 91 in McCall. Towards the east, mostly sunny over here today. So really across the board, we're looking at a lot of sunshine. And there's uh, a little bit of a potential for precipitation, those small pockets of isolated storms. But they're not going to be very impactful and a lot less strong than they were yesterday. Yesterday. We're looking at temperatures pretty hot here in the Magic Valley as well. 99 in Twin Falls, so getting close to that triple digit mark, and we're going to get even closer <laughs> next couple of days. We're going to likely breach that triple digit threshold. We're looking at 101 on Saturday in Magic Valley, 100 degrees on Sunday. That's when we start to get the cool down, which is going to help us out. 96 on Monday into the low 90s by Tuesday. Treasure Valley also getting a heat bump tomorrow, a high of 106, and then we cool down Sunday with a high of 103. Back to the 90s by Monday, and looks like we stick to those 90s through Thursday. I'm John Matteris with high hotel prices this year. Would a rental home or apartment be a better deal for your travel? We'll compare coming up. Did it. And welcome back. New this morning, Delta Airlines is at the center of a federal investigation. The U.S. Transportation Department wants to know why passengers were forced to wait on a plane with no air conditioning in the extreme heat. On Monday, the plane sat on a tarmac at the Las Vegas airport for at least three hours. Temperatures were at 111 degrees at the time. Several passengers received medical treatment and at least two were sent to the hospital. Delta apologized to impacted passengers and offered them compensation. It's getting harder to buy a home in the U.S. According to a new report, sales of previously owned houses have fallen to the slowest pace in 14 years. In June, sales were near, nearly 19 percent lower compared to the same period in 2022. The dip is partly because potential home buyers have fewer options since the share of homes available for sale are at a historic low. And with higher prices, it's getting harder to narrow down where to stay during a trip, a hotel or a rental home. So consumer reporter John Matteris has some of the things to keep in mind when booking so you don't waste your money. One cost that hasn't cooled much for travelers this year, hotel prices. So we're looking at whether a rental home or apartment just might be more cost effective for your next trip. The days of cheap stays during COVID are long gone. Allison Whipple says rental home prices are getting too high for her. The cleaning fees have gotten so bad that it's honestly, I might as well just go to a hotel. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's not that a good deal anymore. But Johanna Assel still prefers a rental home to a hotel. I like the Airbnb better. It's more like home because it's like a house. Sally French with NerdWallet says it can be frustrating to pay higher hotel prices but get fewer perks. So you used to get cleaning service every day. Now hotels often say it's by request or we only offer it every fifth day. As for rates, over 4th of July weekend, hotel rates averaged $197 per night in line with last year. 
So which to choose, hotel or a rental on Airbnb or Verbo? Sally says length of stay and the size of your group tend to matter most. Airbnbs tend to be a lot more worth it for longer trips, as well as trips that involve big groups. According to NerdWallet, the median price for a one night stay on Airbnb is $314. The median drops to $213 for a seven night stay, a 32% drop. And that's a big difference from hotels where typically Typically, you just pay per night. With Airbnb, you can rent full homes or apartments or just a room for prices as low as $30 or $40 a night. With Verbo, you get the whole vacation home. Sally says crunch all the numbers before you book, including parking, groceries, or dining out, and doing laundry. Whichever you choose, Allison says plan ahead. I am definitely a book in advance person. <laughs> and that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. Oh my goodness. After the break, Oppenheimer and Barbie, of course. Need I say more? We're going to talk about them right after the break. Welcome back. Most movies expected to debut big at the box office this year have missed the mark, but could this be the weekend Hollywood has been waiting for? All eyes are on Barbie mm -hmm. and Oppenheimer. David Daniel has a look in today's Hollywood Minute. Okay, ladies, let's do this. Will Barbenheimer save the box office? Industry observers forecast Barbie could be the first film to debut with $100 million or more since Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in early June, while Oppenheimer, with higher IMAX ticket prices to help make up for its R rating and three-hour running time, could be looking at a $50 million opening weekend. With Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 expected to bring in $25 million or more, this could be the biggest box office weekend in a while. They must be migrating. Migration? What a stupid idea. Okay, you're impossible. Because I found a safe place for us to live. I want us to get out and see the world. The first full trailer for Migration is out. The latest Illumination animated comedy features a family of ducks who dare to leave their safe New England pond and have an adventure. Kamel Nanjiani and Elizabeth Banks lead the voice cast. Migration flies into theaters December 22nd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Didn't realize a duck movie's coming out this weekend too, but that's <laughs> happening. Uh, Oppenheimer and Barbie uh, is what everyone has been talking about yeah. nonstop. Oh my gosh! Do you have interest it's in, everywhere? Yeah. Do you have interest in either of those? Of course I do. Okay. Are you going you? to see? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm not. I'm probably not going to go see them. Yeah, I'm the not theater. like going to go this weekend. Right. But I'd probably watch them when they came out on stream oh. streaming services. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Same here. Um, I I don't. Uh, yeah, which would you rather, Matt? Would you rather see Barbie or Oppenheimer? Probably Oppenheimer. Okay. I hear Barbie's like entertaining for everyone, though. Yeah. But probably Oppenheimer. Brian seems Gosling, two words, and I just I'm there. Okay, there it is. So I guess. <laughs> so Barbie for you then over Oppenheimer? I think so. Yeah. yeah I think okay. so. I don't even know. I forgot who's in Oppenheimer. I know there's a huge star-studded cast. I'm I'll sure. Figure it out. I'm sure it's excellent. But. Yeah, sure. We'll watch it when it's streaming. Uh. It is 527 right now. After the break, are trains making a comeback? We go full steam into that answer in just a few minutes. And right now at 528, it's a live look at Boise from our tower cam on top of the Grove Hotel. That's sun coming up over the horizon. We'll be right back. This is Idaho News 6. Good morning, Idaho. Welcome back at 530. You're watching Good Morning Idaho. I'm Matt. This is Geneva. We're taking a live look right now from yes. Bogus Basin. It looks yeah. nice right now, but uh, what we can't really see that you could definitely see yesterday with that extreme heat is a lot of the haze mm -hmm. we've got hanging around in the valley. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think if you do look towards the background here in the Treasure Valley, you can see that it's a bit blurry. That is that haze that is settling into the valley. Now, I'm expecting this haze to thin out later this afternoon and evening uh, in the region. So 
so you can look forward to some clearer skies later today after this smoke kind of moves up towards the north and around central Idaho. But we still have those ongoing wildfire burns, so it looks like wildfire season is starting to be upon us, and we're going to see some reduced air quality due to that in some areas. But for the most part, it looks like Idaho City and down south in Owyhee County are good. We're not seeing major areas of reduced air quality, likely because that smoke is still pretty high up there in the atmosphere. So not seeing a ton of direct correlation with reduced air quality at this time, but we're definitely starting to see that impact of haze, especially this morning, this afternoon and evening, though those skies are going to be clearing out. We're going to have sunshine, but it is going to be excessively hot today. We're looking at a high of 100 degrees uh, around 3 p.m. in the Treasure Valley. That's not actually the high. We're going to get even warmer than that today, looking at a high of around 104. I'm going to talk more about the extended heat going on in our region here in about 15 minutes in my full forecast. All right, thanks, Geneva. In northern Idaho, a trial underway for five members of the white supremacist group Patriot Front. The men, part of a contingent whose arrest made national news when police say they found them in the back of a U-Haul truck near a Coeur d'Alene Pride event last year. Prosecutors calling witnesses, including arresting officers who say they located 20 to 30 people in the back of that uh, box, uh, box truck wearing similar outfits with some carrying megaphones, shields and other protective gear. Authorities say factors at the scene led them to believe the group was headed to disrupt the Pride event, prompting their arrest. The defense arguing there's no way police could have known that, saying the arrests were unwarranted and asking a judge to dismiss the charges. But the judge denied that request, citing sufficient evidence for conviction and allowing the case to proceed. None of the five men on trial are from Idaho, all hailing from outside the state. Uh, they face a misdemeanor criminal conspiracy charges. Here in the Valley, we have no shortage of planes and automobiles, but what's missing? Trains. What's old is new again as local and regional leaders contemplate the reintroduction of regional rail service. Our Ali Tripke has more on when we might see these trains in action. When it comes to daily transportation here in the Treasure Valley, traveling by train isn't the first or maybe even last thought on people's minds. But in comparison to every other country, the United States has the largest railroad system. We have the largest network by far, by 50,000 route miles, more than China. Amtrak CEO Stephen Gardner speaking at Thursday's Greater Northwest Passenger Rail Summit in downtown Boise. Conversations between many local officials taking place in hopes of connecting cities like Salt Lake to Boise, as well as cities in Montana via passenger trains. It connects our college students to different educational opportunities. It collects connects our residents to family, whether it be in Mountain Home, Caldwell, Shoshone, Pocatello ultimately Salt Lake. Plans to reconnect passengers through the valleys are still in the early stages. Transportation officials are optimistic that Congress and the U.S. Department of Transportation will support the development in the coming months. How long is it going to take to build it? How long will the trip time be? How much money is necessary to, to, to achieve the outcome? That's all coming in this next phase of planning once the department makes its decisions. Idaho's growing population is one of the main reasons why passenger trains such as the one I'm standing in are making a comeback. ITD and Amtrak's goal is to improve our rail system within the next 10 years so that we may be better connected to Northwest cities. Reporting from Nampa, Ali Tripke, Idaho News 6. Well, crews aggressively fighting an Idaho wildfire that's more than doubled in size over the last 24 hours. Structures are threatened, but the sheriff has not issued evacuation orders. The Gold Run fire sparked earlier this week and is now mapped at around 850 acres. It's burning in grass and timber about three miles north of the small town of Ola, about an hour north of Boise. More than 200 people now part of the firefighting effort, supported by seven helicopters, multiple air tankers, water engines, and five 20-person hand crews. And people on the ground are digging hand and dozer lines and have completed at least one backburn. The dry heat, wind, and challenging terrain have complicated the fight. A Type 2 incident team is taking over fire management. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And now to the dramatic scene in Phoenix, Arizona, which is coping with a record breaking heat wave. Much of the nation is sweltering, but fire crews in Phoenix had to go to work facing an entirely different level of extreme heat. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details. Last night, an extra challenge for firefighters in Arizona, a massive fire erupting in Phoenix, where it's never been this hot for this long. 
The fire breaking out at this propane tank business next to the Phoenix airport. Explosion sending hundreds of propane tanks flying into the air like missiles. We have evidence of propane tanks up to 500 yards past the uh, ground zero where this is actually happening. We have hundreds of these scattered around the area. We absolutely shrapnel is a concern. The cause of the fire under investigation. The feel-like temperature, 119 degrees. Many local residents are keeping their thermostats in the 80s to keep utility bills down, especially between the hours of 4 to 7 p.m., the most expensive hours to use electricity. More than 100 million Americans from California to Florida remain under heat alerts. Miami is expected to see a heat index in the triple digits for the 40th consecutive day. In Jacksonville, a 10-month-old is the latest victim of the heat. A babysitter is charged with manslaughter after police say she inadvertently left the girl inside a car with temperatures in the mid-90s. It's a tragic case with tragic consequences and will have consequences. The water off of South Florida is so hot, it's now bleaching the coral, a vital part of the ecosystem. If over tens of hundreds of thousands of years these coral have been around, people might say, well, come on, they've made it through plenty of marine heat waves. Not like this one. But in California, these people cooling off, skiing at Mammoth Mountain, where snow is still on the ground after the winter's historic 715-inch snowfall. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. I don't believe there's snow still places. Well, an unfortunate finish to the Tour de France for Boise High School graduate Matteo Jorgensen. Jorgensen had to pull out of the tour after suffering a knee injury during a massive crash on Sunday. The 24-year-old was one of the top Americans to watch at the tour, taking a third and fourth place finish on two separate days. He withdrew after 15 stages while sitting in 48th place overall. He was second among U.S. riders. This is Jorgensen's second appearance at the Tour. He finished 20th overall last year and recorded his first pro victory this year at the Tour of Oman. The time is here. Team USA's first game of the 2023 Women's World Cup Tournament. And here in the Treasure Valley, the community is supporting one of their own, Sofia Huerta. Tonight in downtown Boise, you can attend a watch party to celebrate. Our Jessica Davis has more. The 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup is here and Team USA is scheduled to play their first game on Friday. And you'll see some familiar faces like Alex Morgan or Megan Rapino, but you'll also see Sofia Huerta, a born and raised Boise native. And she'll be displaying her skills at one of the biggest sporting events in the world. She has been told uh, no many times and she c continued to find a way to reach her dream. and. Even though there were setbacks and obstacles, and uh, even though some people didn't believe that she could do it, she believed in herself and just kept going and found a way to get it done. Huerta received the call in June that she was going to be on the U.S. National Women's Soccer Team. After years of playing on different teams, she finally reached her goal. Um, she was on that path, and she, you know the, the, the determination that she has you know, she's accomplishing the goals that she set for herself very early. She graduated from Centennial High here in Boise. One of her past coaches, Michael Mole, says Huerta playing in the World Cup shows kids that their dreams are achievable. So the fact that she's doing it, people can see this firsthand. And so any kid in Treasure Valley, if you've got ability and ambition, you can do this. Huerta is the first person from Boise to play in a Women's World Cup. And on Friday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Jump Park in Boise will be cheering on Sophia and Team USA as they play Vietnam. When you think, uh, I tried and it just didn't work out, if you still want to achieve that dream, never give up. And it does take a village. It takes the support of, of coaches, of mentors, of friends. Um, you have to really depend on everybody. In Boise. Jessica Davis, Idaho, News 6. And Team USA facing off against Vietnam today. The watch party kicks off at 6 o'clock. Centennial High School will host activities as a fundraiser for their women's soccer team. Game starts, as mentioned, 645 on the large outdoor Jumbotron screen. You can read more about Huerta's journey on our website, IdahoNews6.com. It's 540 right now still to come here on Good Morning Idaho. Our community baby shower week continues as I take it to Caldwell. We'll meet Baby Haven right after the break.
And we're going to get back into your weather. Temperatures are looking above normal with a little bit of fluctuation for the next 10 days. We'll get into this weekend's temperatures after the break. As we continue highlighting the wonderful organizations helping out new and expecting families during our community baby shower, we look at one in Caldwell that's played a huge role in hundreds of families' lives. This morning, I introduce you to Baby Haven at the Caldwell Salvation Army. When I was 17, I was pregnant with my first child and I didn't have a lot of family support. I was working on and off on my own. So I kind of lived on my own with my partner. Um, we were very low income at the time. I didn't know how to take care of a child or essentially what I was going to do once I had the baby. While Takasha's story isn't necessarily uncommon, finding a group that will help you every step of the way is. Fortunately for her, she found Baby Haven. But I went to a WIC appointment at one point and they were like, hey, if you, your situation, like there's this program and they'll kind of help you get free stuff for learning how to be a good parent, essentially. Baby Haven is a free program run by the Caldwell Salvation Army that has helped new and expecting families for several years. It is for um, families who are either pregnant or the uh, child is up to 24 months of age. They come in and we have um, community partnerships that come in and teach lessons. The program teaches families life skills like healthy eating and cooking, smart shopping, money management, and rewards participants through an invaluable point system. They earn points for coming. They also earn points when they take their child to a well check, so if they go to a dental visit, any of the different things that help a child to be healthy, and then they're able to spend those here in the incentive store. And with those points, they can get things like shampoos and soaps, books, clothing, and so much more. And you can take home things like formula, diapers, clothes, just any essentials that you need for the child. And then if you've earned enough points, you can get bigger items like bouncers or play pens and stuff. It 